Okay, so we're here today to go over the instructions for the uh, What's in Your Water assignment, which is part of chapter 11 in your textbook. So it should look like this, what's in your water, okay? And let's go to that site, it's in the chapter 11. Let me share my screen with you. First off, let's go to the desktop, share that. Actually, let's share, let's share this. So this is where it is. It's under assignments, what's in your water, right? And so uh, I'll be putting an instruction set right here, which I guess if you <laughs> already get there, it'll, it'll be there already. And I put some other inf some information here just for you. This is a little video you can watch about, about the problem. Uh, this is actually a video from uh, Cleveland, I think, or something. Anyways, I put uh, some information I found about, about this here. Also about this thing called corrosion control. So what happens in this assignment is, uh, this is uh, a little uh, case study about Washington, DC. And it's about lead and copper sometimes, but mostly lead in drinking water. So how, and how does the lead get there? And how does lead get in drinking water? Well, look, lead, it could be from the pipe, right? So the pipe itself could be made of lead. Sometimes the, the water faucet or the valves are made of bronze and they often have some lead in them. Um, sometimes when you have copper pipes and you wanna put two copper pipes together, you basically weld them together. You call it, it's called soldering. You solder them together and they use lead to do that, right? So all this lead is in the water piping. So how's it get in your house? Well, um, so the lead, uh, you know, can, does it can corrode, the lead is not water soluble, right? I mean, no, if you take a hunk of metal and put it in water, you're not gonna, it's not gonna go in your water except as it corrodes. It corrodes or it rusts, right? And, and some of the metal, then the rusted metal or the oxidized metal can then be dissolved in the water. So the, what we like to do then is if we can keep the water away from the lead, bingo, right? Because now the lead can't dissolve I mean, the water can't dissolve the lead. The, uh, and how we do that is by coating the inside of the pipe. So if you take a pipe, say this is the pipe, and you would coat the inside of the pipe with something like polyphosphate or phosphate or orthophosphate or something. And what that does is it keeps the water away from the metal surface. The metal is here. We coat the inside with, uh, with some kind of phosphate. That's one of the basic ways we do it. And that video there will tell you about that, right? So, well, what happens? Well, sometimes these water companies, like that happened in Flint, they forgot to add the phosphate or they did it on purpose because they thought it would cost too much money. Uh, in Washington, D.C., it was a different issue. In Washington, D.C., they actually changed the kind of way they chlorinated the water. And in Washington, D.C., they were using regular chlorine. But the problem with what regular chlorine is that when it, it, as it gets, it starts in the water treatment plant, it works its way through all the water pipes until it gets to your house, right? So sometimes that chlorine can kind of, uh, will go away, let's say, right? So it's not as effective. So they switched over to a kind of chlorine called chloramine, chlor, chloramine. So we added an, an NH, NH4 nitrogen, uh, hydrogen group to the chlorine called chloramine. And that lasts longer. So it, the water, the chlorine gets to your house. So we keeps the, it disinfected for a longer time. So that's what, that's what they did in Washington, they added that. Well, what happened to that was the chloramine dissolved all of the, all of the lead uh, oxide that it, that it kind of formed on the inside of the pipe. And it loosened it all and dissolved it and off it went in people's houses. Now, they went back and fixed that by adding the spot state stuff. But it took like two years to get ready, so there's, there's a lot of water chemistry involved in, these water, in this water treatment. So the water is treated so that, and it's in a very, created in a very specific way. And it's, its pH is very highly regulated, its solubility, uh, different things are regulated very, very strongly so that when it gets to your house, it's safe to drink. So it's, uh, you know, it's just not, they just don't pull it out of the well and drag it to your house. It's, it's uh, processed water, right? now. That's the basics of what happened. And so your job is, of course, is to read all the stuff. Let's look at the case study itself. Here's the case study. And uh, 
it's, not, it's actually pretty short. All you're gonna do really is you wanna to try to read through, see as I click on these, these are highlighted, these are links, these are good links, I checked them. So you can go to these different links and read about the problem, right? There's also some EPA guidance. And then you answer the question. So here's what I recommend. I recommend that you divide up the questions. Maybe there's, I think there's uh, 15 questions. So there's uh, however many are in your group, divide it up so everybody does some of the work and answer the questions. Now, questions one through nine are actually pretty easy. They're just based on the reading, nothing too complicated. Just read the stuff, answer the question. Um, 13, 14, and 15 are also pretty easy. The tricky ones are 10 and 11. Now, why are they tricky? Well, they're tricky because it makes you do some calculations. So that involves math. Uh, it also involves uh, exponential, exponential values like you know, 10 to the minus 9 and things like that. And it involves units like micrograms and milligrams and uh, milliliters and things like that. So you just got to <clears throat> watch your units. When you do these things out, you just want to watch your units. Uh, and if you, <clears throat> you know, go along and cancel what's on the top, what's on the bottom, cancel your notes out, you should end up with the right question, with the right answer. Now, whoever gets number 10 and 11, if you run into trouble, I suggest reach out to me and I'll see what I can help. Well, if you want to give it a shot first, which I recommend, and then uh, you know, email me or text me or send me it, send it to my bio, send it to my my phone. Text me your work. <clears throat> I'll take a look at it and see what happens. Right. So whoever gets ten and eleven, uh, please reach out to me as a resource, or unless you know a water chemist or an environmental engineer, family member, uh, maybe they can help you. But that's it. So do the work. It's not that difficult. It might just take you to learn a bunch of new words. Yeah, obviously I'm here to help. So reach out to me. Uh, and then when it gets down to the end, you want to have your completed answers, 1 through 15, typed, please. And you want to then include the case study reflection like we've been doing all semester long. So that's it. Uh, that's all you need to do. So if you have any questions, you're going to reach out to me. You can text me. You can hit me up through uh, Canvas. Either way, I'm happy to help. Otherwise, good luck, and we'll see you soon.